Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Real Life. I hope you're having a great day. It's always a pleasure to share a new episode with you. Before we start today's episode, a reminder that you have access to our easy-to-use episode map guide, which will link you to all 1,300-plus episodes around the globe. Just click on the map link below, zoom into any part of the planet, click on the blue, red, or orange dot to connect you directly with that episode. The episode title and details will appear on the left side, click on the blue link, and you're on to that vintage reel or video. You may want to zoom in closer, as there may be more than one episode clustered together. And a special hello to all the new subscribers. Welcome aboard. I hope to entertain you and pique your interest in obscure and fascinating footage from around the globe and over the past century. This week's Vintage BC episode is a look back at a unique chapter of Northeast BC history. The spectacular suspension bridge across the Peace River south of Fort St. John was opened in the summer of 1943, replacing a ferry crossing on the Alaska Highway. It spanned the river for 14 years until it collapsed, amazingly, without causing any injuries, following a landslide under one of the bridge abutments. The suspension bridge had been erected in less than nine months in the midst of the Second World War. The Alaska Highway was an important service road connecting the Northwest Staging Route, a series of airstrips across northern Canada used to ferry aircraft and other supplies to Alaska and the Soviet Union. The highway's approach to the bridge from the north cut through a graveled river terrace to the massive concrete abutment constructed on shale sedimentary rock. The abutment supported a short approach span and anchored the cables from which the 142 meter long north side span and the 284 meter main span were suspended. With similar spans on the south side, the bridge was 640 meters long. In 1946, the bridge and highway became part of the Canadian government's northwest highway system maintained by the Royal Canadian Engineers. About 11 p.m. on the 15th of October, the bridge was closed to traffic by unusual subsidence, or movement of shale rock, at the north abutment. Over the next 12 hours, a landslide on the north bank carried a million cubic meters of shale and the anchor block several meters towards the river, overstressing the suspension cables and eventually rupturing the cables that carried the load of the bridge deck up to the suspension cables from the side span. While the side span of the cable supports collapsed into the river, the towers of the suspension bridge, although damaged, remain standing. Hundreds of spectators, the results of jammed up southbound traffic on the Alaska Highway, watched the severing of an important link with southern Canada. No one was injured. Traffic was restored after a week by a 70-ton ferry which operated until the river froze three weeks later. Meanwhile, the newly constructed railway bridge five kilometers upstream was selected as a temporary crossing. The bridge was decked and curbed and guardrails were placed to protect the single lane of traffic. Round-the-clock traffic control was provided by Canadian Army units. The southern detour to the railway bridge crossed the Pine River by a single timber trestle, which was severely damaged in a flood and then replaced by a modular military steel bridge called a Bailey Bridge. Both north and south approach roads required relocation, widening and graveling. The detours functioned for two years until the suspension bridge was replaced. The indirect costs of the collapse were felt all along the highway as far as Whitehorse. Traffic stopped for a week and was later delayed by the 10 km diversion across the railway bridge. The difficulties of supplying stores, motels and service stations also affected oil and gas exploration around Fort Nelson. The landslide on the north bank was attributed to the weathering of the shale rock after its disturbance and exposure by the construction of the bridge approach and of the water supply to the natural gas plant. Similar shales, known as clay shales, have since provided challenges to foundation engineers across the interior plains. The bridge failure remains an example of the far-reaching consequences of a comparatively small event. Beecher Linton's heavy equipment firm was awarded the contract to clear the debris from the river. It's quite rare to have footage of an actual event, but through the efforts of Beecher, we have a record of the challenges faced removing the remains of the wartime constructed bridge.
A member of Beecher's crew donned the scuba equipment to fix recovery lines to a small earth mover that had fallen through the ice during the efforts. Elsewhere on YouTube are a brief 43 second black and white film of the collapse from British Movie Tone News and a wonderful one minute color film of the opening in 1943. Both are worth searching. The films would have been shown with trailers before the main feature at your local movie theater back in the day. If you enjoyed this and other episodes, Please consider supporting this channel as a member. After sourcing a film, it takes between 8 and 16 hours to produce each episode from digitizing, research, writing, voiceover, editing, and final output. Thank you to all my subscribers and members for making this channel a possibility. Don't forget to subscribe, as that's the only way you'll learn of the new episodes being released Fridays and Saturdays. Thank you for helping fill in the blanks on all these episodes. On occasions, I do make mistakes. I mispronounce locations and sometimes overlook some details. I very much appreciate the corrections you share on the comments section. Thanks for not being too hard on me. It's a delight seeing the collaboration among viewers. It's even more meaningful when I learn that a family member or friend is recognized, even 50 plus years later.
There are plenty more episodes coming from this treasure trove of footage donated by Beecher Linton's family. Like all the reels in my collection, these reels are being restored and preserved to enjoy today and for future audiences. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Be kind, and we'll see you next time on Real Life.